to bring him into the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ took every bit of punishment that you and I deserve for being his enemy. And yet he said, come and be with me if you will just follow me as your king. You guys, anybody remember September 11th? Yeah. Yeah. You guys, the United States went to war. One of the amazing things that happened about three months after the war started, <clears throat> they went into this area of Iraq, and 8,000, as soon as they got there, 8,000 men surrendered immediately. They were waiting for them to come. They didn't want to be the enemies of the United States. So they just surrendered. They just surrendered. Jesus entered into enemy lines, not to destroy the enemy, but to save the enemy. So that everyone who would see that he was God and would give up and surrender to him would not be his enemy anymore, but would be a part of the kingdom of God. They would be citizens of the kingdom of God. And the amazing thing about the king is he, as soon as that happens, he says, I don't call you servants. I call you friends. Because what are the chances that I dial the phone and say, Hey, President Barack Obama, dude, let's hang. Okay. He's going to be like, who in the heck are you? Why would I do that? He's not going to give me the time of day. If we go to the Queen of England and say, hey, let's be friends. You know what? Chances are she's not really interested in being friends with me, but she's probably not really interested in being friends with you either. Jesus, the king of the universe, who fought the battle on any territory to bring back into his kingdom, not only wants to be the king and ruler over your life, he wants to be your friend. He wants to be the one who protects you and provides for you. And some of you are thinking right now, God doesn't do that very well. If you just knew my life, he's not keeping anything. He provides nothing. And he certainly doesn't protect me from anything. There will come a day, Todd talked about, that the kingdom of God is now, and the kingdom of God is forever. And there will come a day when the king of the universe will rescue everyone else. And there, he will and sometimes we have to wait. Because I will guarantee you that there are people who are now friends of the king of the universe who died today, who got their feet cut off, who had their families murdered because they believe in Jesus Christ. The kind of protection and provision that he has for us isn't always what he wants. Because Jim Elliott is probably one of my favorite stories in this missionary. He went in to share the love of Jesus with a tribe who never had ever heard of him before. And they murdered him along with his three friends. Um, that wasn't very protective of God, was it? Didn't really, God didn't really give them what he needed, did he? He did. Because he was in the moment of Jim Elliott's death. He was an eternity. And it's hard for us to grasp what Tom is talking about, that life is that long in our relationship to eternity. And that's really hard to understand what we're learning about. And I will tell you this. Jesus is the key. And there is no competition. And you are either in the kingdom of God or you are his king. And you will have to choose. And you will have to decide. If even in the things that you don't understand, Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I know that my sin is your enemy, and I know that your death and resurrection can make you your life. So I will follow you for the rest of my life, and I will make you the controller, the provider, and the one who protects me for the rest of my life. And even when that doesn't look like what I want it to, I will continue to follow you. Because I 
was 14 years old. How many of you were 14? Yeah, <laughs> love being 14. That was hot. Awesome. <laughs> Lived in a little town called Rockwall, Texas. In case you only knows, every once in a while the southern accent just kind of leaks out. Um, when I was 14 years old, and I was sitting in a gym with a bunch of students just kind of like this. And this will tell you how old I am. Anybody like heard all the mess about Michael Jackson in the past couple of weeks? Okay. The night that Jesus became my king was the very first time that Thriller was shown on MTV <laughs> at midnight on New Year's Eve. Okay. So y'all can go look that up and find out how old I am. Um, but you guys, the most exciting thing about my night that night was not the fact that Michael Jackson's Thriller video came out, even though I must say, it's a rockin' video. I loved it my whole life, okay? Um, but Michael Jackson may have been the king of pop, but really, Jesus is the king of the universe. And really, 200 years from now, no one's going to know Michael Jackson's name. 200 years from now, Jesus hasn't come back. He will still be the king of the universe. And I don't care if you're 11, 12, 13, 14, or 15 years old. Today can be the day that you say, Jesus, be the king of my life. Step out of enemy territory into the kingdom of God and find peace.